Quick sign up before we begin today's video. Are you a Berserk Maniac? Are you a Kentalofa? If so, you are in it for a treat today. In this lengthy 20 minute plus video, you will learn everything you should know about Kentaro Miro's early life and his early manga career, including his primary school 40 plus volume manga serialization, his PhD, and his real name. With that being said, let's go back to the intro. The hero's journey, aka monomyth, one of the oldest and most popular types of story, stretching back to the dawn of history. A tale about a protagonist going on adventures and encountering incredibly difficult tasks which they ultimately adapt and overcome to be victorious. The joy of success, the sense of achievement, and the fruit of transformation is what made the hero's tale so popular and widely beloved by the audience. Probably the majority of your favorite stories fall into this category. Harry Potter, yep. Naruto, yep. Spider-Man, yep. Hercules and the Twelve Labor, yes sir. Heck, we can go back to the beginning of recorded history. The epic of Gilgamesh. But what is the flip side of that? Everyone has its two sides, and Hero's Journey is no different. Here comes Anti Hero Journey. The tale is similar to the monomyth, where the protagonist faces difficult quests, except the protagonist has been brought low. Their hope has turned into desperation. They have been humiliated time and time again, and might even be slowly turned from a hero to a villain. In the end, the protagonist must accept that they are broken, come to terms with being flawed, and decided to move past their complex history and walk the path of a hero. As I grew older, I became far more interested in the anti-hero journey than the monomyth due to its richer character development and self-recognition, and just the raw emotion that it can portray. For me, a story that has perfectly depicted such a narrative device is no other than the dark fantasy sensation of Berserk. So without further ado, Taku, let's dive straight into the saga of Kentaro Miura. The Green Dark Lord. And now, smash my intro! Before we begin today's video, an interesting thing I have found out during my research is that Kentaro Miura is actually not his real name, it was his pen name. In fact, he has never published his real name, which is crazy when looking back because we always thought that was his real name. For the sake of this video, we will still call him Kentaro Miura. Back to the video. One of the biggest European sporting events this year is the Euros, where the English team made it to the final, only to lose it in the penalty. RIP Free Lions. Our last huge victory was in 1966 when we won the World Cup and brought the trophy home. Also, in the same year, we had a Batman film starting Cesar Ronero as one of the most iconic jokers of all time. Guess what other interesting events occurred in 1966? The culture viewers probably figured it out. The hero in today's video. Kentaro Miura was born on the 11th of June 1966 in Chiba City, Japan. The Chiba Prefecture, kinda like a US state, is known for its cultural heritage like Hondonji Temple and Chiba City Museum of Art. Combined with modern attractions like the Disney theme park and home court for Chiba Lot Marine Team. If you fancy a quick drink, you can always check out the Sapporo Beer Chiba Plant Marine House and grab yourself a fresh beer. Nice. Stop drinking beer and procrastinating. Let's get back to the main topic. 
The Shota Kentaro was born in an artistic family where both of his parents were involved in the art industry, inheriting excellent drawing genes and being nurtured in a really art-friendly environment. However, he was constantly moving houses and school due to his parents' work. The one thing that helped Shota Kentaro fit in a new friendship group was his drawing. He often get praised for amazing drawing beyond his age group and this has positively reinforced his love for illustrating. His favorite musician growing up was Susumu Hirasawa, a member of the Japanese electronic rock P model, and he is a huge fan of Hollywood movies, especially those directed by Tim Burton and Sam Raimi. Like every other kid, Kentaro grew up consuming entertainment from a variety of mediums, but he was really into fantasy, horror, and dark stuff in general. Some of the works that left the biggest footprint in his mind were Violence Jack by Devilman creator Go Nagai. Green Saga, still the best-selling heroic fantasy novel and still the longest work by a single author ever by Kaoru Kirumoto, the Hellraiser franchise, the hard-boiled muscular manly battle manga sensation, the Fist of North Star. And our last but not the least, Disney and shoujo manga like Rose of Versailles. What the f And many other famous artists and illustrators like Hyanomus Batch, MC Escher, Gustav Dore, Peter Brugel, which I will not get into much detail as I simply don't know enough to comment on it since I just googled all of these guys' names. On top of that, one of his favorite manga cards that he tried to emulate is Yoshikaze Yoshihiko, the character designer of the mecha sensation franchise Mobile Suit Gundam. The combination of horror, fantasy, and dark themes has deeply embedded inside Kentaro's mind, and he has a huge repercussion in his future, which he was yet to know at the time. Moving on, the young Kentaro enrolled into elementary school like every other kid. But what is unique about this Shota was his passion for manga. He started his manga creation journey at grade 2. What? Other boys were still too busy calling girls ugly and being zindele. He continued his hobby in drawing and continued honing his skill. By the fourth grade, he started illustration on fancy frame paper, trying to mimic his favorite artist's drawing and panel while implementing paper, specifically used it for manga like high grammage paper on his daily routine. Kentaro soon achieved a feat that most could only dream of, published the Mura Ranger in his primary school paper for his classmate. My man is legit smashing multiplication Girl, in the morning while banging out manga chapter at lunch break. What a crazy 10 years old. I am starting to believe those memes where Japanese kids are the strongest species in the world are legit. Lord. What is even more insane is that my man published it over 40 volumes. Let me repeat. 40 volumes. What the actual fuck? I have been struggling to draw a fancy S letter since high school. Meanwhile, Shota Kentaro is casually drawing volumes after volumes at primary school backyard. God is unfair. In the following years, teenager Kentaro produced his second work, Ken no Michi. During production, he started to explore new tools and grabbed it in their ink, a simple black ink color commonly used in comics. By 1973, a 13-year-old Kentaro enrolled in middle school and during that period, he kept drawing on a regular basis and continued to experiment with a range of techniques, some professional. It is no wonder his art skill has enhanced it drastically. Side note, he was a huge fan of Star Wars growing up. Also, young Kentaro was a really strong at judo. He easily beat everyone at his age group. Damn, he is a rare battle weep. 
During high school, he enrolled it onto an art course and met many good friends who shared his similar weeb hobbies to him. Without a shred of doubt, these fucking weebs started to produce their own manga and publishing in high school, and many of them became good rival of each other. One of his good friends, Koji Mori, actually became a professional mangaka who later produced the filler survival manga like Suicide Island, but that's another story for another day. So what happened when you put two filthy weebs together? They will start joining hentai, of course. I mean, they will join science fiction doujinshi to submit to a weekly shonen Sunday. Same thing, am I right? Unfortunately, their works was not selected, but they did make it to the final round of the selection. Imagine Kentaro debuted in weekly shonen Sunday. That would for sure change the whole trajectory of his career. A few years later, Ado Kentaro decided to obtain some XP points on what it's like working as a mangaka. Hence, he worked as an assistant for George Morikawa, the author of Hajime no Ippo, aka one of the best modern boxing manga and a sports masterpiece. Miura's natural talent immediately impressed the Morikawa sensei, as soon Kentaro was dismissed from the studio as there was simply nothing left to teach the young ambitious amateur. Not only had Kentaro learned many valuable lessons of running a weekly civilization, he also started to design his original character. The very first few illustrations in his portfolio was a badass warrior with a giant sword. Hmm, that is strangely familiar. Is that you, Ichiko? By 1985, the 19 years old Miura had applied it for the Art College of Nihon University, which required him to submit a piece of work as an entry exam. The gifted young artist submitted a short project titled Futatabi, aka Once More, and without much surprise, he smashed it the exam and was accepted into the college. Fun fact, the project was later awarded the 34th Newcomer Manga Award from Weekly Shonen Magazine. Funny enough, his high school friend Koji Mori also ended up in the same uni as him. Weep attracts weep. Speaking about his friend, Kentaro had five really good friends where all of them want to be mangaka. They constantly share the interesting things with each other like movies, fun instruments and novels for content creation. This slowly became a competition where everyone wanted to post the best slash most unique entertainment to stand out amongst each other. As a result, everyone benefited hugely in terms of story construction while consuming all of these content. They then used these valuable resources to create works during uni, and these trial and errors became extremely valuable lesson for the aspiring mangaka. By the end of university, Kentaro Miura had a doctorate degree in art history, making him Dr. Miura. Sheesh! That is impressive. Miura decided to strike while the iron was hot and produced another one shot, Noah, for the Fresh magazine in the same year. But fate was not kind. Time flew by, and now it is 1988, three years since his last work. Kentaro was so close yet so far away from his dream. Pressure started to build up and he needed to produce something soon. Later on the year, he was paired up with his childhood idol, Buronson, aka the Fist of North Star author, to produce Oro, aka King of Wolves, which he illustrated. This was a three chapters shot about a couple being teleported back to the 30th century and encounter a series of cruel events. One year later, the dream duo were partnered it up again and produced a sequel, Oro Den, aka Legend of King of Wolves, was published in 1990. The two later paired up again to produce a manga titled Japan in 1992. The plot focuses on some Japanese citizen being isekai to a world where Japan is destroyed and Japanese people were slaves to many European countries. But the Yakuza is determined to change this and reunify Japan once again. Looking back, something huge occurred during the three years partnership. Kentaro started to pull all of his favorite stuff together, including the warrior of a giant sword, to produce a work slash one shot. 
This prototype was 48 pages and it was published in Haku Sensha's monthly Comic Comic. It was really positively received and it even got to the second place in the 1989 Comic Comic's 7th Manga School competition. Kentaro decided to expand on this prototype and worked it continuously to polish the work. The genre he decided to focus on was his childhood favorite, fantasy, as at the time there weren't many great manga in that genre, beside the manga Bask. Hence Kentaro found his niche. Next he decided to set his work in medieval Europe with some advanced weaponry, like cannons flew in to separate his work from others, and added a nice spin to the core fantasy element. Kentaro also considered setting his series between Vlad the Impaler aka Dracula and John of Arc, but decided he wanted to have cool fantasy stuffs like elves, demons and rapey horses. So he hesitated with a more historical series. What pushed him over the edge into fantasy territory was Shotaro Ishinomori Sensei, one of his idols. His much more realistic hotel manga had a much more lukewarm reception compared to his sci-fi sensation Cyborg 009. So he decided to commit to full-blown dungeons and dragons. He drew upon a wide range of sources from various manga to Grimm's totally not for kids fairy tales and even obscure Italian murder mystery novel like Name of the Rose. Really, how the f did he come across this? What? Mira also loved the Hollywood movies, especially Conan the Barbarian and Excalibur. That being said, he still had a lot of love for history, so he added historical events and settings like the Inquisition, Rome and Kushan Empire. Then he moved it onto the protagonist. Initially, he wanted a lanky Asian guy with a katana, like every other manga ever. Finally, he realized a hench dragon slayer with a massive ass sword would be a lot more fitting. And this build seems much suited for the medieval theme setting, seems way more real. We will leave Japanese source man character for Zoro. He wanted to make a dark and nihilistic warrior, similar to Hakaida from Android Kikaida. For the outfit, he used one of his favorite childhood anime, Fist of the North Star, as the base. Next, he needed a weapon for the main protagonist to battle with, and Kentaro came up with the inspiration of giant swords as the primary attack from works like Shinji Wada's Pygmalion, Dragon Slayer from Guin Saga, and the Snow Queen. To differentiate his character further, he drew him with one arm after seeing the work from Tetsuka Dororo, while adding his favorite sci-fi touches like cannon on the artificial arm. Next, he worked it on the personality of the character. He really enjoyed the insane anger nature of Max from Max Fury, hence he decided to incorporate this as the primary emotion of the Black Swordsman. After compiling all of these elements, his final design for the protagonist was created. Guts, the Black Swordsman. He then decided he needed a mascot character. This idea was derived from Disney, where the main character always had a cute little thing with them. He settled it on Puck, drawn from Shakespeare. This annoying little elf served it as a way for Kentaro to deliver his silly humor, while acting as a nice counter to the angry dark gods. Finally, all of the essential criteria to enhance his prototype to the next level has been gathered. Kentaro Mura was ready to venture in the cruel manga industry one more time. Ultimately, the opportunity arrived it, and he began his serialization in Monthly Animal House, and thus in 1989, Berserk was born, and dark fantasy was changed forever. And we are done with the first part of the Kentaro Miura video. I've decided to split this series into a two-part video due to the enormous amount of content I want to cover. Otherwise, this video would easily exceed one hour. Damn!
On the flip side, I will try my best to produce a banging video with my best effort. And I will try to upload it in a speedy manner. A cute little annoying elf told me the more likes and comments this video get, the speedier part 2 might be released. No promises, just a suggestion. With that being said, you will stay safe and stay blessed. I'm out. Peace!